smog, the curse of the motor car. This deadly cloud contains a cocktail of toxic hydrocarbons, nitrogen oxides and carbon monoxide. All byproducts of petrol engines. But there's one amazing device which can be fitted to car engines that can neutralise all these poisons. It sounds like magic, but this tiny box of tricks is very real, and it's called a catalytic converter. But there's a catch. To make this little box, you need a few grams of one of the world's most precious metals, platinum. At twice the price of gold, platinum is phenomenally expensive and the perfect metal for making jewellery. But it also has another, even more amazing property. Platinum is one of the world's most effective catalysts, and when exhaust fumes come into contact with it, it causes a reaction that breaks the toxic gases down. The trouble is, platinum is costly for a reason. It's extremely rare, difficult to mine, and the refining process takes six months. To find out how they do it, we've come here to Nye, Montana. This is the home of Stillwater Mines. Here they produce four tons of platinum a year. 800 metres underground are 100 kilometres of tunnels, where teams of miners dig for this precious metal around the clock. But even in one of the most platinum-rich areas of the earth, finding a seam to mine is difficult. They're never more than three metres wide, and so geologists must take regular samples to test for platinum and its sister metal, palladium. Once a seam is located, the digging machines move in. It's a huge operation, as mining just one gram of platinum means digging out a staggering 300 kilos of rock. Once they've got the ore to the surface, it's fed into these giant crushers. The resulting powder is then sent along a special magnetised conveyor belt to extract any iron. The next task is to mix the remaining material with water and pump it full of air. This causes the platinum to collect on top in a froth known as concentrate. The finely ground ore minerals are agitated and aerated and the, the ore minerals are floated to the top of this cell and spill over the edge and concentrate. The waste minerals fall to the bottom of the cell. So far, so good. The platinum is now 300,000 times more concentrated than it was before. The trouble is, it's still only 0.1% pure platinum. And to clean exhaust fumes, it needs to be 98% pure so the froth is dried and packed into cakes ready for the next stage. Here, the powder cakes are thrown into a furnace to burn off most of the other elements, leaving just the tiny amounts of metal, copper, nickel, palladium, and most valuable of all, platinum. To stop the metals fusing together as they cool, the molten mixture is showered with cold water, causing it to shatter into fine particles. But that's as far as they can go here. Now that the platinum is reaching a valuable concentration, they ship it off to another facility several thousand kilometres away. Unfortunately for the inmates of Sea Wing, we can't tell you where this plant is. Its location is top secret. It belongs to Johnson Mathy, who produce a third of all the catalytic converters in use around the world, around 35 million last year. The job of this plant is to separate the platinum from other less valuable metals. They do this by using a series of chemical processes, which eventually result in a 98% pure platinum salt. But for the converter to do its job, the exhaust gases must come into direct contact with the platinum. The trouble is, they can't afford to use more than just a few grams. The solution is this ceramic honeycomb. 
Though it looks small on the outside, on the inside it has a surface area the size of a football pitch. To coat this surface, the platinum is first suspended in solution and then poured onto the honeycomb to form a layer just a few molecules thick. Then the honeycomb is fired to activate it. The end result is an almost magical device, capable of converting poisonous exhaust fumes into clean air, water and carbon dioxide. So if the love of your life offers to buy you something made from platinum, it might be they're more concerned about looking after your lungs than winning your heart.